Many of you display them or make them this time of year. I'm referring to traditional Pizanki eggs. Our Lisa Sugar talked with one man who is doing his best to keep this longtime tradition alive. Well, as promised, we brought back Paul Karinchok, who is an expert Pizanki egg maker and an instructor teaching classes. He was here before telling us about the many classes, but with Easter coming up this Sunday, we thought it was only appropriate to have you back to talk about what these eggs really mean, because there's a strong history behind them, Paul. Yes, there is. Thanks again for having me back. It's a pleasure. Yes, there is. This goes back to maybe, I'm going to say 988 AD. Right. So you're talking uh, after Christ. And uh, back then, it was a, uh, a tradition that these eggs were, spring was coming around. Easter was a big holiday. So when they started something like this, they usually uh, gave it to family members or friends. And it meant something back then. And when you think about it back then, they didn't have the dyes that they do now. So maybe they used oh, onion skins, coffee grounds, or red beet juice. And that's where they got the, uh, the colors. They all mean something. The colors mean something. And the symbols as well mean something. So give us a little sample of what some of them would mean. Okay, for instance, maybe the fish would represent Christ. The bands or the ribbons go around the egg has no beginning, no end. Uh, the colors, they would represent maybe white would be purity, mm -hmm. red would be for strength, um, and green and brown would represent Mother Earth, so like spring is coming around. So it tells a story. The colors and the symbols have a story to tell as well. Was there anything that was maybe symbolic of one family, like a traditional, kind of like an heirloom with them or something, or a, I can't think of what the word is, like a symbol for their family? Yes, actually it was uh, in Ukraine, different, different sections. So you could probably tell by the egg which uh, uh, area it came from or which section it, it did. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. So how important is it for you that you're preserving this? Because we've heard about it in years past, but I seem to see a resurgence of this. So people trying to, I guess, bring back this long historic tradition. Yes, yeah, so you can see that more often. And you can see the young ones are getting more involved in it, and it, which is nice. I really, and it is, a, it is an art, really. It really is an art. So it, uh, I feel honored that I'm doing something like this, that I'm passing this on to generations. Hopefully my daughter will be as good as me. And this is something, it's the Ukrainian egg, the Ukrainian uh, religion, the Catholic religion that started this. But I think that everybody is now getting into it. You don't have to be Ukrainian to be interested oh, in the egg. Not at all. Actually, it's different part, Eastern European. You have the Polish, you have the Lithuanian, Russian, Romanian, so different uh, nationalities. And they're all a little bit different in their own way. So, uh, but the Ukrainians take credit for this one here. And actually, there's people out there that are a lot better than me, but thanks for the Thunder. <laughs> well, I think it's great that you're sharing this tradition with other people. You've had a lot of classes that people could learn. You hope to have more next year so that people will be coming along. If anybody's interested in this, can they give you a call? Oh, absolutely. My phone number is 570-668-5789. And uh, if they're unable to make it to a class, give me a call. I'll teach them at my, at my house. No problem whatsoever. Wow. Well, this is a lovely tradition, especially appropriate for this time of the year. But uh, I think it's going to be something that's going to be growing in popularity. So thank you for sharing it with us, your talents and your time. And uh, happy Easter. Same you as well. Thank you.